Okay, you're seeing this after the fact, but apparently the wrong microphone was on, so you'll hear a hum through the podcast. I am sorry, and RJ leaves halfway through it anyway, so um, is what it is. Uh, again, I'm sorry. Just ignore the hum.
was supposed to come in and cool us down to what they say 60, 75, 60, you know, to cool the front. So we're thinking, woohoo! By noon, RJ's out there building himself a wind brace with our parts because it was what? In the 50s? Yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. Not really. Uh, it was for him, I like it. But we got all the rafters, or half the rafters up and half the roof up, right?
yellow tire anyway. I went to the local new shop and got two used tires. They're good. Um, so, yeah. We're cool. We ate lunch, right? It was not really that huge of a deal, except for the fact that what was Gary's problem with doing it? It was heavy. Who's Gary? The guy that owns a local tire shop. And he had to put two five ton jacks. Five ton jacks in. Oops. <laughs> he told me was like, you go slow. <laughs> like I'll be very careful. So we're home. Like and so well, we've done it before, boy. I was a lot of weight. And some of them were huge. And I talked to the preacher that was there because to me, um, we do this for the sheep and the goats, which is great. But there was a lot of large, well kept pumpkins that put patch, pumpkin patch. They put them on pallets, they talked over them, kept them dry, um, really stored them to make them last. They didn't know how long they'd last. Kind of finding stuff out. And um, I was looking at it from a nutrition thing, going, that's a lot of people you could be cooking pie to. So I talked to him and we separated out three that had never touched the ground, still were solid, nice, and, or no, there was five originally. Because he didn't know how And I offered to do, you know, a dozen bags at least of pumpkin. Plus, going to do one And he thought we were going to do one so we got five of them up there, and uh, I did some for them, and one of the pumpkins, one, did enough to make 18 pies, and I freeze it at two cups per bag. So that's like 36 cups for one pumpkin, and it wasn't even the biggest one. Now I'm scared. I see my sun setting over there. I did take um, I did take two of them to a multi-generational family. Um, they've got one, two, three, four generations all living in two households. Um, and the families are rather large. I think there's four adults. Plus, there's grandma and grandpa. Yep. There's grandma and grandpa. And there's four of those kids, all of their spouses, all of their children, who one just got married, the youngest one just got married, and then there's grandchildren to, I guess great grandchildren to, all living in like two houses. So I took two of those big old pumpkins, and that's why we started out with five. Um, young family that's just starting out, and what I told them was to donate to the church. I called the preacher and I said, well, you know, I see mouths going to a great family, there's people I need to do these things, and he said, they're yours, do with them what you want. Well, around here, people don't take things for me. So, I just want to make a donation to the church when they come. So, who knows? A year from now, they might still have a whole bunch of time that will give that chunk. But, uh, Anyway, yeah, I still have two more to do. Right? Working on it. Um, what else? We got our craft days coming up. Our kids are crafting. Days tomorrow is supposed to be cold. Not happy about that. It's normally not this cold in the winter. It's Thanksgiving. We're all out not Boom. Um. 
Bomb. Bombs go kaboom. Not B O M B. Anyway, um, 
So we got the truck back on Thursday. We weren't doing a whole lot up until then. I was getting ready for a crash show. Um, then we got the truck back on Wednesday we picked up that other uh, load with Eddie's truck. And then I left Eddie for one to their young family of three children, mom and dad, and they're young. Um, I think Eddie's just maybe 10 years old. Maybe. Um, he might be 30. I think he might be only close. I'm not sure. Um, she might do a little interview. Who knows? She found us online and we kind of see everything. 
So, uh, I'm working on trying to get a collaboration going. And that might happen, might like not, I don't know. But just a lot of little irons in the fire. Nothing too terribly. I'm going to get off here and I've got a pumpkin. I'm going to get on and get it done. It'll probably take me well until night, even with two ovens. So, anyway, I'm going to get off here. Um, life is just going on crazy. I think it's because I'm trying to cram all of our stuff from October is going to on the farm. November is supposed to be my time to create and do and all over December and getting ready for that January fiber festival. Well, without my truck, I couldn't get the items I needed to get the repairs done. So now I'm trying to get the repairs done and my crafty stuff done in November. Just, I just feel like there's not enough time. And the time change thing, I am so over that real fast. Um, I know, you fall back and get down to sleep. No, you don't. Not with a miniature donkey out your back door braying it. I don't know. It, it was funny because we set our alarms, set the clocks back the night before. Set our alarms for 6 o'clock, like always. Um, RJ doesn't get up at 5 anymore because he doesn't have school work. So we've gained an hour there. So at 6 o'clock we get up, have our stuff. We're always out to feed by 7. So we set our alarms. 6 o'clock comes. And they already think it's so. Show the donkeys up. Making all of his noise. And that means that Kid wants in. So Kid starts barking at him, Brian, and then the pig starts throwing a fit in her kennel so that she, because she thinks it's time to go. It is not music to my ears when a time changes. Just saying. And that's just what goes on in and around the house that we can hear. Once you get out to the pasture, we have breeding season. So you've got the Cotswolds right up here by the house, and we've got the Shetlands out by the barn. So you can't really hear the Shetlands. The Cotswolds do this low hum, so it's not as bad, but you still hear it. You walk in right after you, and then you get on the pasture. And the goats, they carry on. They were mad. And then you got the horses. When the goats start doing, when you go through the barn door, it makes a very distinct noise, which sets the goats off. And the goats set the horses off. So you've got all this menagerie of noise, and it's like, oh my gosh. And they're twice as loud if they can wait. And then to them, we should have been up an hour ago. So, yeah, I'm over the time change thing. If anybody knows how to be in that in the state of Oklahoma, I'm all for it. I know Arizona doesn't do it. I know some other states don't do it. I'm ready to get it banned here in Oklahoma because in an agricultural day, we're up before the dawn, we're in bed after the sun sets. So it doesn't matter at what time the sun rises and the sun sets. We still have X amount of daylight hours. So, yeah. I'm over it. There's my rant. I'm done. I will talk to y'all later. <laughs> Bye.